السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته سعادة رئيسة الجلسة العلمية يا فندم مع حضرتك اه دكتور نور عذرا اهلا بك يا فندم اهلا بحضرتك اهلا بحضراتكم الحضور الكريم السادة المتواجدين في البانلست نعمل منكم اغلاق الصوت اثناء تحدث رئيس الجلسة والالتزام بوضع الاسئلة العلمية في الـ Question and Answer section والاسئلة الفنية والخاصة بالدعم الفني في الشات يتفضل رئيس الجلسة مشكورا تفضل دكتور شكرا جزيلا يا دكتورة أولا أرحب بكم في المؤتمر العربي الأول للطلاب الدراسات العليا تحت عنوان التكنولوجيات الناشئة وتطبيقاتها في خدمة التنمية المستدامة بالوطن العربي إحنا السيشن بتاعتنا اسمها Deep Learning and Application وعندنا set of papers should be introduced by uh, uh, some applicants from uh, Arab region So we'll start um, أنا أنا عايز أتكلم إنجليزي والعربي بس أنا هتكلم إنجليزي الأول علشان لو حدش فهمني وبعد كده نتكلم بالعربي. We have set of papers that will be introduced during the sessions. Every paper so should be presented in 10 minutes from 10 to 12 minutes. Uh, at the end of the sessions we will have Q&A, question and answering for 15 minutes. Uh, we will start with the first paper which will be introduced by uh, Will be introduced by Ahmed Abdel Magoud. Okay, and the was paper name Localization Official Images Manipulation in Digital Forensics via Convolution Neural Networks. Uh, I'm going to speak in Arabic. Hello, welcome to the session number two in the day of the third, Deep Learning and the Applications. We start every paper with a limit of 10 to 12 minutes. And in the end of the session, we will talk about 15 to 20 minutes for questions and answering for anyone who has any questions. حد عنده أسئلة زي ما الدكتورة قالت فضلت تحطها في الـ Q&A وهنبدأ أول بيبر بي اللي هيقدمها أحمد عبد الموجود باسم Localization Official Images Manipulation in Digital Forensics via Convolution Neural Networks هل أحمد موجود؟ أيوة يا دكتور نور مع حضرتك تمام 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 تفضل اعمل شير سكرين وتفضل حضرتك تمام هو الـ host disabled participant share screening الدكتورة هتفتح أول حضرتك دلوقتي تمام أنا هتكلم بالإنجليزي عشان لو في حد العربي بتاعه مش قوي ولو في أي مشكلة في uh, الإنجليش yeah, just please not me okay so um, basically uh, my paper title I would like to uh, thank you so much for accepting my abstract uh, towards your uh, first uh, conference online for um, students from all our league and my suggested paper is uh, titled localization of facial images manipulation in digital forensic via convolutional neural networks Uh, first, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Ahmed Mohamed Abdelmawood. I'm a master's student at Cairo University in cloud computing. And I would like to thank my two um, colleagues, uh, Mr. Amr Abu Talib from University of People and Dr. Saeed Azouz from National Telecom Regulatory Authority. And um, let's start with the agenda. I'm going to start with the introduction, problem statement, related work, proposed technique that uh, has been proposed in this paper, the experiment results and uh, the conclusion. So let's start with the introduction. So of course you all uh, know that detecting manipulated images and videos is an um, important topic in digital media forensics. Most detection methods has, uh, has been used binary classification to determine the probability of a query being manipulated. Another important topic is uh, locating the manipulated regions. I mean, as an example, performing segmentation. So, which are mostly created by um, maybe three commonly used attacks, uh, removal, copy move, and splicing. So, uh, in this paper, basically we have designed a convolutional uh, neural network that uses the multitask learning approach to simultaneously detect manipulated images. 
and uh, we just only want to say that we choose this uh, topic as a very start topic, just a very review paper, and we introduce a very small contribution because the major concern in digital image forensic is the deep fake phenomenon. I mean, um, a worrisome example of the societal threat posed by the computer-generated spoofing videos, anyone who shares video clip or pictures of him or herself on the internet uh, may become a victim of a spoof video attack. Several available methods can be used to translate um, uh, to translate head and facial movements in real time. And of course, you all heard about this application called the deep fake. And this application has been used uh, online and uh, on the air for the US media. And of course, uh, most of you, I guarantee most of you uh, watched this video that this actor who tried to uh, manipulate his facial expressions to be like an actor called Tom Cruise and it have achieved a really high level of reality. So several countermeasures have been proposed for the visual domain. Most of them were evaluated using only one of few databases, including uh, uh, CG versus Voto database and the deep fake database and the face forensic plus plus database. So this is the example that I was speaking to you about. I mean, on the right, you can see the original image of the actor. And in the left, you can see the swap that has been happened using this technology. This technology uh, is having a two side effects and maybe uh, a very good uh, for some, you know, um, fields like acting, uh, like uh, studying an academic field in order to enhance some uh, methodologies and algorithms to field the field itself and can be used for manipulation. Studying this type of uh, algorithms and techniques in such a digital forensic field is very important, especially in our uh, country, Egypt, because in the last years, especially in the field of my work, we have seen a lot of manipulations and fraud cases happening in both fields, banking fields and telecommunication fields. And this mainly has been done in order to achieve two main things. The first thing is gaining illegal money from the governmental, Egyptian governmental authorities. And the second one is for, for uh, human trading, which is a huge threat to our country, especially in those days. I would like to share with you some statistics about uh, uh, the overall cybercrime that can be happening because this technology can be part of cybercrime. I mean, 70% are happening to desktop and laptops, 61% from smartphones, 53% to the tablets, 50% through the access points, 50% servers and server rooms, 47% from the routers and switches. And all those statistics has been uh, gained from AT&T 2018 cyber security report. So as you can see that malware is no different from the manipulation that is happening from the face manipulation, whether in images or videos, because the consequences are tragically very high on the society. Here we can see the amount of monetary damage used by reported cybercrime in IC3 from 2001 to 2019 in millions of dollars. And as you can see that the curve is really going so high, starting from 21 to 2019, from just 17 million or about 80 billion, reaching to 3,500 billion, which is a really catastrophic number. It's just only in US. So imagine the amount of fraud cases that is happening worldwide and amount of money that is being um, caused by the such uh, using such technology towards the governmental and uh, special companies. So speaking about the problem itself, um, I would like to say that uh, the problem, uh, yeah, has been introduced in many different papers, starting from, uh, from my study from 2001, uh, reaching to 2020. 
And uh, we want to say that the problem itself is causing, as I said before, a huge amount of money and a huge amount of resources. So the, the, the concern in digital um, image forensic is locating manipulated regions, the shapes of the segmentation masks for um, manipulated facial images and videos could reveal hints about the type of manipulations used. I mean, it has been illustrated in previous researches before. Most existing forensic uh, segmentation methods, uh, their main focus on three commonly used means of tampering, removable and copy move and splicing. So in other image segmentation tasks, these methods need to process full scale images. As you can see from this slide that studying the mechanism that has been used in order to detect the manipulated images and get the real one uh, is not being deeply discussed. I mean, you can see Trump, you can see actor, you can see a presenter and all the manipulated images are used to share the uh, fake news uh, for um, fraud uh, detection and uh, whether in healthcare, banking and telecommunication. So the related work uh, are mainly divided into three main sections. The first one is generating manipulated videos. The second one is detecting manipulated images and locating the manipulated regions. So the first one is generating manipulated videos, which is creating a photorealistic digital actor. It's a dream for many people. So uh, as an example, uh, in 2016, uh, um, Thies, Dr. Thies has demonstrated a facial uh, re, uh, the enactment in real time, subsequent work to lead to the ability to translate her bruises. And in detecting manipulated images and videos, uh, this idea has been presented using the convolutional neural network, using part of pre-trained CNN as a feature extractor, uh, as an effective way to improve the performance of the CNN. Uh, so the other approaches detection include using a constrained convolutional layer using a statistical pool, uh, pooling layer or maybe two stream network or maybe even lightweight CNN network and uh, this can be represented mainly as I showed in the last two slides in the references by Dr. Kuzulain and his co-authors by creating a benchmark for determining the transferability of state of art detectors for use in detecting unseen attacks. So uh, the last, uh, the last uh, point is locating manipulated regions because there are two commonly used approaches in located manipulated regions, uh, segmenting the entire input image and repeatedly performing binary classification using a sliding window. And uh, the segmentation approach is commonly used to detect the removal, copy move and splicing attack. So semantic segmentation methods can also be used for um, can be used for forgery segmentation and a slightly different segmentation approach is to return the boxes that represent the boundaries of the manipulated regions. And this can be represented as been cited in the reference in the last two slides by uh, uh, five authors, starting from uh, reference number uh, seven to uh, reference number 12, using the same approach, binary classifiers for um, classifying images as spoof uh, or bona fide are called at each position of the sliding window. So the proposed technique uh, can deal uh, with very- sorry, sorry, Ahmed, I have to interrupt you. You have only five minutes left, so try to catch up what you have missed. Okay? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so, um, Briefly, uh, the uh, proposed method outputs pose the probability of the input they being spoofed and segmentation maps of the manipulated regions in each frame of the input. And uh, the main focus of us is to, uh, is only the scoop of the facial images, not the whole body, not any images, just the facial images of the human being. So the face area are extracted in the pre-processing phase. In theory, the proposed method can deal with various sizes of input images. However, to maintain simplicity in training, we resize cropped images to 256 by 256 pixels before feeding them into the auto, uh, auto encoder. And uh, this is just um, 
an illustration for the training frames that has been used by the previously got the three data sets we previously said in the introduction and uh, I would like to uh, I, I would like from the first place just to explain uh, the five main uh, uh, equations we have been used however I didn't include them due to the limitation of the time but I will say the main variables that have been used in our equations we are having three types of loss activation loss segmentation loss and reconstruction loss. Those are the three main parameters or, uh, that has been used in our five main uh, equations that has been written in our small paper in order to be used in our training phases and testing phases in our experiment. So the experiment itself, we are having uh, databases. Uh, we evaluated the, the proposed network using two databases in the phase forensics and phase forensics plus plus uh, through 104 real videos and through source to target re uh, reenactment and self reenactment data set containing another 104 fake videos created again using face to face method so uh, related to the results we can see that from table one is uh, we used only uh, videos with light uh, compression with uh, quantization equal 23, images were extracted from videos using uh, Kuzulain's, Dr. Kuzulain's paper setting, uh, as been shown in the references. 200 frames of each training video were used for training and 10 frames of each validation and testing videos were used uh, for, um, validate, uh, for validation and testing, respectively. So there is no detailed description um, of the rules of frame selection. So we selected the first 200 frames of each video so we would like to say that our work is not the best case work however we can consider it as a new novel work that can be built in the future for a new uh, uh, for researchers to enhance the accuracy of our results as we can see that we are having the training phase uh, the data set, the main data set used is source to target and uh, the four main testing phases uh, as you can see that uh, we used uh, the manipulation methods of face-to-face -face and defects uh, and face swap. In table two, uh, we can see that uh, the results of uh, uh, settings of our autoencoder, and we have previously uh, uh, got importing the results of those uh, tables from uh, uh, another related work that has been uh, uh, mentioned before. So we are having a method the FTRS and FT and deeper FT and proposed old and no recon. And finally, our proposed new uh, uh, methodology. So as we can see that the complete proposed method with the new settings will be achieving a segmentation with a 90.27% accuracy. However, when we this is the highest accuracy and those compared data sets. However, to be honest, when we compared our proposed uh, technique it, it, to against the other techniques that has been published starting from November, 2019, so far it didn't show the same highest accuracy. Our uh, accuracy in the proposed uh, technique has been approved that it will be the fifth uh, highest accuracy regarding the segmentation. However, when we made this paper in November 2019, it was making a high sense regarding the uh, accuracy segmentation and the classification accuracy and EAR. So table four results for test two. Uh, as you can see that uh, the results for the match and mismatch conditions- You have to carry, carry up. <laughs> you have to okay, carry okay, up okay. because so your sorry, time is up. Uh, okay, can I go to the conclusion? Yes, uh, yes, yes. Now, okay, um, I mean, the, the main idea of ourselves that proposed the CNN with uh, y shaped autoencoder uh, demonstrated a high level of effectiveness, not the, the one we needed, but for both classification and segmentation tasks without using sliding window as commonly used by classifiers, information sharing among the classification and segmentation and reconstructing uh, tasks so as a future work we will mainly focus on investigation the effect of using uh, residual images on uh, auto encoders performance processing or maybe high resolution images without uh, maybe any resizing or maybe improving the ability 
to deal with unseen attacks. I'm so sorry for the detail. I mean, it's very first time for me to make an online uh, presentation. And excuse me if I took uh, too long time. Thank you so much. And uh, I'm apologize again for the time. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Ahmed. Uh, I would like to state that every paper uh, have to be presented within 10 to 12 minutes. We have a make exception for Ahmed for 50 minutes. So all the other presenter will have the same uh, time so the next presenter will be uh, for paper uh, titled cryptocurrency forecasting using machine learning and deep learning techniques and will be presented by professor uh, doctor or engineer khadiga so is it uh, is a presenter exist yes yes you have the uh, you can share your screen and start your presentation Hello, everybody. Uh, firstly, I want to tell you thank you for your acceptation to uh, participate in this uh, conference online. So I introduce myself. I am Khadija Etzderhan from Morocco, Hassan First University, Lamsad Laboratory, Elen Sabarshi. I work with my professors Abdul Qadr Al Alawi and Bujma Ashad. My presentation is talking about cryptocurrency forecasting using machine learning and deep learning techniques. So in this presentation, I will uh, follow this outline. Firstly, introduction and motivation out the, out about the topic. Secondly, long short term memory method. And uh, I represent the data used in this uh, work and numerical result, result. Finally, the conclusion and future work. So introduction and motivation. Sequence prediction problems have been around for a long time. Predicting the price of assets is a never even obsession in capital markets, and the crypto space is not an exception. Since the early days of Bitcoin, there have been many attempts to create predictive models that forecast the price of crypto assets. The predicting cryptocurrencies phrases is considered as one of the hard, uh, hardest problems to solve in the data science industry. This include a wide range of problems from predicting sales to fending patterns in stock markets data. This may help investors and the fund manager to make the right decision for their investments. Okay, that's all I would like to see about the introduction and motivation. Now let's move into the next part is talking about the long short term memory method. It's a network or a type of recurrent neural network capable of learning over long sequence. This differential time from a regular multi-layer neural network that do not have memory and can only learn a mapping between input and output patterns. By comparing the prediction results of the pro proposed algorithm with those of other prediction algorithms. The prediction algorithm based in LSTM has higher prediction accuracy. It's also shown by Lihmiri in 2018. This algorithm has strong applicability and higher accuracy in digital currencies prediction. Uh, the calculation processes of this method LSTM unit can be divided into the following steps. Firstly, the forget, the forget gate, secondly, the input gate, and the output gate. In this process, we use T is the time, x index t is the output data of LSTM cell, and each index t less 1 is the output of the LSTM cell at the previous moment. C index t is the values of the memory cell, and each index t is the output of the LSTM cell. So the first step, the first step in our LSTM is to decide what information, what information we are going to throw away from the cell state. This, this, uh, this decision, this decision uh, is made by C mod layer. It's log at each index t less one and x index t and output a number between zero and one. The next step is to decide what new information we are going to store. Its cell state he has two parts. Firstly, uh, a CMOD layer decided uh, what values will you update. Second, uh, or next uh, step is the hyperbolic tangent layer creates a vector of new candidate values. 
uh, in the next step, uh, we combine this two to create an uh, update to the state. Then we decide to update each site value. Finally, we need to decide what we are going to output. This output will be based in our cell state. Deep LSTMs be created by track, uh, tracking multiple LSTM layer vertically with the output seconds of one layer forming the input seconds of the next, in addition to recurrent connection within the same layer. Now, let's move about the information about data used in this study. The data set uses in our study compress daily prices in US dollars for the following two digital currencies. Firstly, Bitcoin, and secondly, Bitcoin. From 28 November 2030 to uh, 6 May 2018. In this study, we used 1,657 observations for each one. The first 1,326 values of the observation are used for training purpose, and the remaining 332 for uh, most recent ones for testing and out of uh, simple forecasting. The, the first curve, it represents uh, the result, uh, the experimental result about LSTM applied by DTC. The blue color represents the training steps and the orange uh, color represents the prediction steps and the green, it's historic steps. The second uh, curve, it's about uh, numerical results about uh, uh, LSTM applied by Vichen. The blue is training steps, orange is prediction steps, and the green is historic steps. Uh, the forecasting performance is evaluated by root mean squared error. It's measure how much error there is between two data sets. The RMSO is given by this formula mathematics. This table summarizes the values obtained, obtained of RMSO for Bitcoin and Vichen. It's 285.38 for Bitcoin and 0.23 for Vichen. So we conclude that LSTM is more accurate in the case for Vichen compared to Bitcoin. Investors and fund managers can take into account this point by being more precocious about the prediction of Bitcoin compared to Vichen. Uh, our results of Bitcoin 295.38 uh, over perform than of Lehmiri in 2018, his RMSE values of LSTM is 2,754 Bitcoin. Before finish my presentation, I will present my future work, inshallah, is to repa uh, compare this method LSTM with the other deep learning methods and also machine learning methods like ARIMA. This is the reference uh, that we use in this, uh, in this uh, work. So I finished my presentation and thank you for your attention. Thank you, Khadika, for your presentations and for uh, keeping in mind the time and you have finished within the accepted time. So we will move to the next presentations. Uh, uh, the next presentations will be for paper uh, on the application of real time deep learning uh, networks for A ALPR from video streams targeting age AI architectures by Ibrahim. So if the is the presenter here? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I'm hearing you. Uh, could you, uh, Khadiga, close off your uh, mic? Okay, uh, so you have the floor now, you can share your screen. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, hello. Hello, you can go on. Yes, okay. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be uh, here today. Uh, firstly, uh, I'm Ibrahim Elshal. I'm a master student at Informatics Science Center, Nile University at Egypt. Uh, I am with Dr. Wael Badawi and Dr. Mustafa al -Attar. Today, I'm presenting a preliminary work using deep neural network for automatic, automa automatic license plate recognition from video stream targeting age AI architecture. Uh, 
uh, our agenda for today include the problem statement and the challenges that we faced. Uh, then we will uh, talk about the process of data collections and preparation. Uh, after that, we will uh, uh, discuss the model we have trained. Uh, and at the end, we show our prototype and the perform performance of our tested uh, models. Firstly, uh, we face the problem in uh, traffic management and law enforcement and vehicle over uh, owner uh, ident identification. Uh, and we need to develop a recognition system to solve this problem. But uh, we face some constraints like uh, high speed of vehicle that lead us to miss uh, some objects or get a lower of accuracy results. Uh, also, we have the, some constraints in like uh, conditions like uh, rainy, uh, rainy um, uh, air. Also, the main problem uh, in the expansion of video camera de uh, deployment, which it turns work uh, all day during the weekends. Also, we have to highlight some uh, of the old solutions based on pixel by pixel matching to, uh, ident uh, to identification, uh, identification the, uh, the object detection, uh, based on some algorithms like uh, motion estimation. And, uh, we, and so we have to uh, do something like uh, image classification uh, to identify the location of the, uh, the to identify the location of the object uh, or more objects and set a bounding box with a probability to localize it, it correctly. So first of all, we we will show our data collection and preparation. Uh, we work on a real video uh, a real video stream uh, from Stackhold uh, Shelter Stock website. Then we using uh, open source tool label image to uh, la uh, to label our uh, objects. I have labeled our license plate for uh, all these images. I have created uh, 376 annotations, like figures below. Uh, for example, in right in right hand side, uh, it shows the image name. Uh, the image shows the name of the image and the location. Uh, some of the information, also the height uh, and width of uh, each image, also the bounding box for the object that I have targeted uh, to detect. Uh, then we uh, we create a TensorFlow record uh, file to, for our object. Then we start to train our model using different algorithms. But here we ca we didn't know which algorithm we should start, so we start with a single shot detector. Uh, then uh, we use uh, faster RCN, uh, fast and faster RCNN. And uh, we also we trained uh, on yellow, but we have uh, some constraints on it. Firstly, uh, as regards to, uh, of the model training, we start with single uh, shot detector. It's designed for object detection in real time. Uh, uh, it based on around uh, CN for all uh, for all uh, for all input images and compute the feature map, then predict a bounding box uh, uh, of its uh, relevant category. But it, um, the accuracy of single shot detector it's very bad, and we will uh, uh, show it in a performance part. Uh, but ha had an advantage uh, an advantage that it uh, really fast. Uh, also, we, we use a fast neural network, fast neural network based on idea for giving an input image to a convolutional neural network. Then, uh, after pass it to ConvNet, we have a create a feature map. From feature map, we did, we uh, we, say, we we do something like uh, selective search uh, for region of interest. Then max pulling and fully connected layer. At the end, the model predicted both class labels and region of interest directly. Also, fast uh, RCN uh, building the idea also for region uh, uh, purpose, but uh, here we didn't do um, a, a selective search. And yellow uh, based on the idea of the split uh, the input in two grades of cells. And each cell directly predict a bounding box and uh, object classification. 
So uh, as a result, uh, we work on a video stream for car entry uh, to garage, and we ta uh, we ta uh, our target to increase the accuracy of detec detection for all objects. So we wo have worked on uh, multiple algorithms to see uh, which one will be, will will give us for our application the highest accuracy. As we see here, these uh, uh, pictures see that the, the, our models have been detected the old license plate uh, entry entry to garage. Uh, but in SSD, uh, we face some problems. It, uh, firstly, it can't, it can't detect a multiple object. So as we see here at the below, uh, the first, uh, the, 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 the figure in the right hand side has been detected, but in the middle, it can be, it can be detected due to uh, the high distance from the camera and the car. And the last one uh, can be detected due to the multiple objects. The resolution of the Im image uh, is th uh, 300 by 300. And the accuracy uh, have been tested on our test data has been 44%. And faster CNN, uh, we achieve our target with, with highest accuracy and 9100%. Uh, 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 no need more data for training. Uh, resolution for input image is 600 by 600. Also, it can detect multiple objects and prediction time is uh, 2.5 seconds for, uh, for, uh, for, for one frame. So uh, in this work, we review the performance of automatic license plate uh, recognition for real-time application based on convolutional neural network, including uh, faster RCNN and uh, SSD. And we will, uh, in our paper, we will represent a more, a more, uh, more of uh, algorithms. Uh, we targeted, uh, we target to uh, use the, uh, the highest accuracy of algorithm to uh, to be able for uh, um, real time video stream. Uh, our prototype also they present to detect the license plate at the entry of garage, and we analyze in terms of accuracy and real response. We share the early, early results of our techniques to explore the hidden, uh, no, uh, the hidden knowledge with real-time video stream. Also, in our future work, we, uh, we work on a techniques to decrease the prediction time of the highest uh, accuracy algorithm that, uh, be, uh, that we work on it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ibrahim, uh, for uh, uh, your presentations. And we now we go to the next uh, paper. The paper will be uh, uh, talking about uh, comparative performance analysis of uh, proposed solution for autonomous parking in GPS and dependent localizations uh, by uh, uh, Hanan and Ital. Is the presenter here? Yes, I'm here. Okay, you can share your screen and start your presentations. You have from 10 to 12 minutes. Uh, okay, but uh, I couldn't uh, share it. One, one minute and it will be uh, okay. allowed to you. Uh, first, uh, I'd like to thank all uh, conference organizers uh, for their great efforts. Uh, special thanks to Dr. Mahmoud Noor. Uh, second, let me introduce myself. Uh, I am Hanan Hussain, a PhD student in Ain Shams University, a research assistant at Electronic Research, uh, research, uh, research Institute. Uh, my, our presentation is about comparative performance analysis of proposed solution for autonomous parking and GPS independent localization. Uh, our agenda will include the uh, introduction about autonomous parking, uh, different localizations technique, uh, different localizations technology, a proposed network scenario, and finally conclusion and future work. Uh, let us uh, discuss about uh, what is autonomous parking. Uh, autonomous parking, uh, it's uh, allow vehicles uh, to drive autonomously without any driver to find an empty parking slot, as it is as shown in the figure, uh, to inside the garage uh, without any driver, as I said. Uh, such a system uh, to be achieved uh, needs uh, some, uh, some modifications, uh, such as uh, ADIS uh, to navigate uh, vehicle autonomously inside this garage, uh, localization technique uh, with high accuracy uh, in range of centimeters, uh, uh, with uh -huh. and uh, high resolution uh, 
to uh, detect uh, the slots uh, accurately. Uh, all localization managing and processor uh, should be uh, by, done by the vehicle uh, itself. Um, with select, uh, and we also we need to select the suitable technology to support this localization technique and optimize the distribution of the network. Let us uh, show different uh, techniques that used to estimate uh, device or vehicle local location. Uh, reference uh, received signal strength or RSSI uh, is one of the localization techniques uh, that try to detect the distance from the reference node to the device or uh, the vehicle. Uh, it simply uh, depends on equation one uh, to detect the, the distance uh, as shown where n uh, is the uh, pass loss constant, A is received uh, signal strength uh, level, minimum signal strength level, uh, and D is the actual distance or measured distance that we will calculate uh, between reference nodes uh, and the device. Uh, also there another technique uh, that attach uh, with uh, RSSI, which is uh, fingerprinting. Fingerprinting uh, simply uh, require additional history or uh, uh, survey about environment. As shown uh, in the figure, the measured RSSI uh, is executed in offline uh, training or offline phase. Then in online measurements, when the system is deployed, uh, we will compare uh, the offline uh, training with online uh, positions to allocate the vehicle. These techniques uh, combined together, RSSI and fingerprinting, has several advantages and disadvantages. It's simple implementation, low cost, uh, but it's uh, very weak against fading and noises, has low accuracy, and unfortunately, any manner uh, variation in environment, new fingerprinting are needed. Um, after that, we have angle of arrival technique. Uh, this technique is based on Antennas, uh, antennas arrays. It, uh, we will need multiple antennas array in order to calculate uh, the incidence angle. When we calculate this angle, we will detect uh, the distance of, uh, of these vehicles or nodes. The system also has high accuracy and no fingerprinting is needed, but it's complex. It has uh, need directional, multiple directional antenna. Uh, and uh, also uh, performance degrade as distance increase. Let us uh, show another technique, uh, which is the uh, time of light. Time of light, uh, it's based on uh, determining distance based on propagation time. As based on equation uh, two, uh, distance between reference node and the mobile is depending on C, which is propagation time and C, speed of light. This technique has high accuracy. Also, no fingerprinted is needed, but um, it needs time synchronization is available between a reference node and a receiver. Also, line of sight is required to get this high frequency as discussed. Time difference uh, of arrival is similar to uh, time of flight, but it uses the different in signal propagation. Uh, from uh, different transmitters, which mean uh, synchronization is vital in both cases, in time of uh, flight and time difference of arrival. But here in time of flight, in time difference, in time difference of arrival, uh, only synchronization is needed between reference nodes, which make uh, time difference of arrival is uh, more better than time of flight as clock synchronization is uh, stated, uh, needed between reference node only, but in time of flight, uh, synchronization needed between reference node and the device. Next, I'm going to discuss uh, some communication technique that support the localization in case of the GBS denied environment, such as in our case, uh, underground parking garage. Wi-Fi uh, is considered as one of popular technology applied as it exists in most uh, portable devices, such as uh, laptops, smartphones, etc. Uh, moreover, Wi-Fi access point, uh, as shown, uh, can be used as a reference node. No additional hardware uh, is required. 
Main advantage of this technique, as stated, uh, widely mm -hmm. available, no additional hardware required, but unfortunately, it's very sensitive to fading and noise. So it leads to low, low accuracy. Bluetooth also can be used as supported technology for localization. Uh, received signal strength uh, indicator, or RSSI, is the most applied technology with Bluetooth. This technology, uh, Bluetooth, uh, I mean Bluetooth, is uh, simple, has low power consumption, but it's affected by noise and fading and has low accuracy. Our FID uh, device is also used in uh, localization. It has two types, active uh, RFID, and uh, active RFID operate in UHF and microwave band attached with power source, uh, used, can be used for uh, indoor localization due to their coverage range, 100 meter, but it has low accuracy. It's not available in most devices. Another type is passive RFID. Uh, uh, unfortunately, also uh, RFID is not efficient in case of uh, indoor localization due to their uh, limited coverage range. Uh, coverage range from one to two meters. Final technology uh, that I'm going to discuss here is uh, ultra wide bands. Ultra wide, ultra wide band uh, signal uh, has, uh, as shown in figure, uh, very short pulse with time period less than uh, one nanometer uh, transmitted over large bandwidths. This uh, signal characteristics uh, has several advantages as it robust against interference, has high accuracy in case of localization, low power consumption, uh, low cost. Also, ultra wide band can penetrate several materials and it has capability to transmit and the localization in simultaneously or in the same time. Therefore, ultra wide band is a strong candidate for vehicle localization. Several researchers approved that implementing uh, time difference of arrival uh, technique supported with ultra wide band technology can improve indoor localization. Uh, some actually some studies uh, proved approved that accuracy range uh, by combining both uh, techniques and technology uh, give us a range of accuracy from 10 to 30 centimeters. Therefore, we will apply uh, time difference uh, of uh, arrival technology based on ultra wide band technique to locate the uh, vehicle to have uh, high accuracy in positioning. Also, integrated uh, ultra wide band radio communication uh, chip, uh, which is IEEE 802.15.4A uh, standard, is easily available on the market. And uh, this chip is offering the ability to implement. Uh, the ability to implement ultra wide band technology in any application uh, scenario efficiently. So finally, we are going to apply uh, this chip uh, in our implementation uh, in future to, uh, to achieve our proposed network scenario. Our proposed uh, sorry, network... uh, I have to interrupt you. You have only five minutes left, so have uh, to okay. carry out. Okay. okay, I'm almost uh, thanks. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, our proposed network scenario will be implemented uh, inside the, the, garage, the garage. The network is covered by anchor nodes, ultra wide band anchor nodes, or over the garage. Uh, this network is covered uh, as shown in the picture. We should distribute these anchor nodes in the garage in order to make the vehicle in any location in the garage covered by at least three nodes to guarantee uh, its high accuracy. This distribution will help uh, to monitor the vehicle uh, past track and to predict the future track. Uh, let us uh, have more explanation in order to figure the procedures of the, our scenario. First, uh, we will start with the vehicle enter the garage. The vehicle after that will send a broadcast message to, uh, in the garage to all the anchor nodes it requires the list of all anchor nodes exist in the, in the garage. This broadcast message will be transmitted to operator application server. The operator application server will reply uh, with the anchor node leads, list, all its IDs, uh, all its location, and also the empty slot and its location in order to vehicle uh, go to this slot. 
After that, uh, the vehicle will update uh, the list and connect to the nearest anchor node, trying to uh, detect its location. Uh, the vehicle will send timestamp to the anchor to the our nearest anchor nodes, and after that, it will calculate or estimate the distance of uh, the. It will, sorry, it will estimate the location in the garage, and its uh, its automatic system will also uh, help to reach to the empty slot. This is our proposed model. Uh, to be quick uh, and finish in the time, uh, our future work will be evaluate uh, the hardware platform and measure its accuracy in locations, uh, introduce uh, artificial intelligent algorithm uh, that could learn from surrounding environments.